subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening welcome to South Asia news line I'm Yeshi Chonsom Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday the 26th of July. India pays tributes to gallant war heroes on 23rd anniversary of Kargil Victory Day. India slams China Pakistan move to involve third countries in CPEC projects. And crisis hits Sri Lanka woos foreign oil farms amid fuel shortages. And now for all the details. India on Tuesday remembered its war heroes and paid rich tributes to its soldiers on the 23rd anniversary of Kargil Vijay Divas that commemorates the country's victory over Pakistan in the 1999 war. India on Tuesday observed the 23rd anniversary of Kargil Vijay Divas that commemorates the country's victory over Pakistan in the 1999 war. Indian armed forces defeated the Pakistani army at the heights of Batalik, Kargil and Dras sectors in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir region. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh paid his tribute to the martyrs of the war and laid a wreath at the National War Memorial in capital New Delhi. The three services chiefs, Army Chief General Manoj Pandey, Navy Chief Admiral R Hari Kumar and Air Chief Marshal V R Chaudhary also paid their respects by laying wreaths at the memorial. On the occasion of Kargil Vijay Divas, Prime Minister Narendra Modi saluted the brave sons of the country who achieved the height of valor in the defense of the motherland. President Draupadi Murmu, who took oath of office on Monday, said the day symbolizes the extraordinary valor of the armed forces and people will always be indebted to the brave soldiers who laid down their lives for the country. A wreath-laying ceremony was also held at Kargil War Memorial in Tras in northern Ladakh territory to pay tribute to soldiers who lost their lives in the war. During the Victory Day event, Northern Army Commander Lieutenant General Upendra Devedi said Indian Army soldiers are always ready to make any sacrifice. Every soldier of Indian Armed Forces will stand steadfast in his dharma of protecting the nation and if need be make the supreme sacrifice beyond the call of the duty Kargil faces Pakistan's so-called northern areas across the line of control LOC that divides the Himalayan region between the two countries The conflict claimed the lives of nearly 500 Indian soldiers many of whom were posthumously given gallantry awards The face off in the Kargil mountains nearly brought nuclear capable India and Pakistan to the brink of their fourth full scale war India saw the fighting in the Kargil sector as an undeclared war with Pakistan. Pakistan denied any involvement in the intrusion saying Kashmiri militants had occupied the heights. India's main opposition Congress party leader Rahul Gandhi and several other party lawmakers were detained by police in New Delhi on Tuesday as they staged a protest while party president Sonia Gandhi was questioned by investigators in a money laundering case. Meanwhile, 19 opposition lawmakers were also suspended till Friday for misconduct as they sloganeered inside the parliament and created ruckus during the ongoing monsoon session. India's main opposition Congress leader Rahul Gandhi and several party lawmakers were detained on Tuesday after they led a protest in the heart of the capital while Congress President Sonia Gandhi was being questioned by the Enforcement Directorate for the second time in the National Herald money laundering case. Rahul Gandhi surrounded by scores of policemen sat on Rajpath the high security avenue near the parliament as he protested over a range of issues from price rise and the targeting of opposition leaders by probe agencies 75 year old sonia gandhi and her son rahul gandhi have been accused of forming a shell company and illegally gaining control of properties worth 300 million us dollars in the case filed by a lawmaker of ruling bharatiya janata party sare sansad aaye ha aur unhone mehangai ki baat ki ha aur berozgari ki baat ki 
और ये हमें यहाँ बैठने नहीं दे रहे अंदर बात नहीं करी जा रही है डिस्कशन नहीं अलाउड है और यहाँ पे हमसे अरेस्ट कर रहे हैं Meanwhile 19 opposition lawmakers were suspended for the remaining part of the week for misconduct as they raised slogans and created ruckus entering the well of the upper house of the parliament to protest against the price rise India has slammed a bid by Beijing and Islamabad to include third countries in the China Pakistan economic corridor saying the project passes through illegally occupied Indian territory Foreign Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bakshi said such a move will be illegal and unacceptable. Amid reports that Pakistan and China have decided to welcome interested third countries to join in CPEC, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor projects, India on Tuesday responded that any such actions directly infringe on India's sovereignty and territorial integrity. India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bakshi in a statement said, India firmly and consistently opposes projects in the so-called CPEC, which are in Indian territory, that has been illegally occupied by Pakistan. Such activities are inherently illegal, illegitimate and unacceptable and will be treated accordingly by India. The multi-billion dollar China-Pakistan economic corridor is a network of roads, railways and energy projects linking China's Xinjiang to Gwadar port in Balochistan. It passes through Gilgit-Baltistan territory which India claims as its own. Activists have long blamed as part of CPEC, indigenous people of Balochistan and Gilgit-Baltistan have been stripped away of their natural resources. They claim it has only brought death and destruction for the local people instead of economic opportunities. And those who oppose it are subjected to torture, and violent crackdowns. In news from Pakistan, torrential rains in recent days have caused widespread flooding and damage in Pakistan's financial capital Karachi this week, even inundating the business district. The heavy rain caused immense hardships for residents who had to step out of their homes despite the announcement of a public holiday on Monday. As they complained, the authorities had not done enough to mitigate the effects of extreme weather. Pakistan's Sindh province on Monday declared a public holiday for financial capital Karachi and Hyderabad amid flooding and heavy rain, but residents said the authorities had not done enough to mitigate the effects of extreme weather. Residents waded in knee-deep water and vehicles churned through the flooded streets, carrying people to their waterlogged destinations. All the schools, offices and markets in the port city of Karachi remained closed as moderate to heavy rain continued to lash various parts of Sindh province. कुछ नहीं किया इन्होंने लोग अभी जा रहे हैं ऑफिस जा रहे हैं लोगों को परेशान हो रहे हैं लोग अभी भी इतनी तेज बारिश हो रही है कुछ नहीं पता कि क्या होगा Local media said meteorological department officials were expecting the downpours to continue across Sindh until Wednesday Meanwhile in neighboring Afghanistan at least 5 people were killed and 10 others injured in the latest flash floods in eastern province of Nangarhar late on Sunday the provincial governor office said on Monday one of the key bridges on the road connecting capital Kabul to the eastern province was also washed away during the flooding, said the statement adding the road is now closed. Three days ago, heavy rains and flash floods rendered huge property damages in Afghanistan's Panjshir and Takhar provinces. However, no life loss was reported. Moving on. Shaukat Nawaz, chairman of a traders' association in Pakistan-administered Kashmir, has raised concern over the increasing cost of books and fees for school education. He lamented the government has failed to provide any relief to the region, which is already suffering due to poor education infrastructure. Shaukat Nawaz, chairman of the Traders Joint Action Committee in Pakistan, administered Kashmir, has raised concern over the rising cost of books and fees for school education amid soaring inflation, demanding that a uniform education system should be implemented in the illegally occupied region. Locals have long expressed dismay over poor educational infrastructure and lack of job opportunities that have fueled a sense of deprivation in the region. 
Now, apart from food and other essentials, the soaring costs of stationery and books is making it even more worse, and they are unable to pay for education of their children. यहाँ पे महंगाई आई है, बिल्कुल पाकिस्तान में भी आई है, पूरी दुनिया में आई है, लेकिन उसके निष्पत जो किताबों के अंदर अजाफा हुआ है, जो उनकी कीमतों के अंदर अजाफा हुआ है, वो हमारी समझ से बाहर है, क्योंकि हर चीज का एक मैकेनिज्म होता है कि महंगाई भी जब आप कैलकुलेट करते हैं महंगाई के तनासब से कीमतों का तयन किया जाता है लेकिन हमारे मुल्क के अंदर यहाँ पे कोई चेक एंड बैलेंस नहीं है Locals have claimed that Pakistan government is hardly bothered about the concerns and aspirations of the people in territories under its illegal occupation and has failed to provide any relief to them amid rising inflation. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka has canvassed oil companies in petroleum producing nations to import and sell their products in the island nation. The move aims to resolve acute shortages of fuel during its worst economic crisis in decades. Sri Lanka has canvassed oil companies in petroleum producing nations to import and sell their products in the Indian Ocean Island, opening its market to resolve acute shortages of fuel during its worst economic crisis in decades. Power and Energy Minister Kanchana Vijay Sekra said on Twitter on Tuesday, sharing an expression of interest. Depleted foreign exchange reserves have left the nation of 22 million unable to pay for their imports of essential items from fuel to food and medicines, leading to extreme shortages that have sparked protests. State-run Salon Petroleum Corporation, which controls about 80% of the market, will give a share of its resources and pumps to the new entrants, the government's notice said. Sri Lanka also reopened its schools on Monday after severe fuel shortages and political unrest kept them closed for nearly a month. However, public sector employees have been asked to continue working from home for one more month, according to a circular issued on Sunday. Vijay Sekhara had earlier on Monday said a fuel rationing system will be implemented from this week for next 12 months, which will restrict imposed to ease the impact of the crisis. Thousands of Hindu devotees on Tuesday flocked the banks of sacred rivers to take holy dips and offered prayers to celebrate the festival of Shravan Shivratri, dedicated to Lord Shiva. It is believed that praying to Lord Shiva during the ongoing monsoon month of Shravan brings luck and prosperity. Scores of devotees thronged the banks of River Ganges in India's northern Haridwar city on Tuesday to take a holy dip and offer prayers to celebrate the Hindu festival of Shravan Shivratri or the night of Lord Shiva. This day is considered to be the most auspicious day in the holy month of Shravan or Savan according to Hindu calendar. Devotees offered honey, milk, lotus flowers and bilva leaves to the Shiva Lingam, the phallus representation of Lord Shiva. It is believed that praying to Lord Shiva during Shravan brings luck and prosperity. Dood chadhaya, panchamrit chadhaya, ganga jal chadhaya, bel patr, bhang, dhatura, fal chadhaya, aur manga bas ashirwad, sarve bhavant sukhine, sarve santuni ramaya, sarve bhadrani pashyantu, maa kashche dukh bhaag bhavet. Long queues of devotees were also witnessed at Shri Baba Agarnath Shiv Temple in northern Meerut city. They brought different offerings to seek blessings of Lord Shiva. Dootin varso se joh hai, कोरोना वैश्विक महामारी के चलते जो है काफी समय के बाद जो है भक्तों को जल चढ़ाने का बाबा के दर्शन करने का नाना तीर्थों जल लाने का जो भक्तों का अवसर दिया है बाबा ने उसका भक्त जन पूर्ण लाभ उठा रहे हैं। Scores of devotees of Lord Shiva called the Kaveriyas were also seen travelling on foot in large numbers, carrying holy water from the Ganges River. During this period, Kavariyas clad in saffron clad dresses walked to the banks of sacred rivers to fetch holy water and carry it back in their decorated pots to their hometowns. Shravan is considered extremely auspicious in Hindu religion and falls between July and August. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. 
subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button